Today we're going to be taking a look at another type of polygon, and it's a four-sided polygon it's called quadrilaterals. The other day we worked on three-sided polygons, which were triangles. Quadrilaterals. Now let me tell you a story about the quadrilateral family. Quadrilaterals, we all know, have four sides. That's what makes it a quadrilateral. quadrilateral. And once upon a time, there was a kingdom of quadrilaterals, and they were getting along very, very nicely until they had a little dispute and they decided to break off. The parallelograms decided to join, have their own kingdom and the trapezoids decided to have their own kingdom because they could just not get along. Now, parallelograms were the kingdom with two pairs of congruent sides and two pairs of parallel sides. Whereas trapezoids were just a little different. They had only one pair of parallel sides and that was their own basic characteristic. Well, the trapezoids really just couldn't get along with anybody, so they kind of just died out, just had trapezoids, nothing else. But the parallelograms con continued to prosper, and they produced rectangles and rhombuses. And the rectangles decided they wanted to kind of make their own kingdom, and the rhombuses said, well, we're just going to go make our own kingdom, so they kind of split apart. Now, rectangles have, just like their forefathers, parallelograms, two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs that are congruent. But they also had four right angles, so they thought they were just a little better than the rhombuses. Rhombuses had four parallel, or excuse me, four congruent sides, two pairs of parallel sides like their forefathers, the parallelograms. But they seem to have two obtuse angles and two acute angles. So they were just a little different. But as time passed, we had, kind of like the Romeo and Juliet, we had a rectangle that met up with a rhombus, and they really got along together very well. And they decided to unite the two kingdoms, and now we have one squared kingdom with four congruent sides, like the rhombus family, and we have two pairs of parallel sides, and we have four right angles. And so the quadrilateral family that had a history of parallelograms lived happily ever after. And the trapezoids, well, they just still existed, but they didn't break off into any more kingdoms. They're just kind of there. And that's the story of the quadrilateral family. Now I do this because we want to talk about what can be classified. Are all squares rectangles? Are all squares rectangles? What's a rectangle? Okay, two parallel sides, two congruent, two pairs of congruent sides, and four right angles. Does a square meet that criteria? It, does it have two sides that are parallel? Two pairs of parallel sides, two sides that are congruent. Those two are congruent. Those two are congruent. And does it have four right angles? Yes, so we can say all squares are in the rectangle family, but are all rectangles squares? No. Okay, let's go back up and look on this side. Are all squares rhombuses? Well, the definition of a rhombus is you have four congruent sides. Are squares, do they have four congruent sides? Yes. Okay, so a square is considered a rhombus, but is a rhombus considered a square? No. It is not because it does not have four right angles with it. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that you can work your way. Anything down here belongs into the kingdom above it, but you can't go down. You don't say that all parallelograms are squares. They're not. Are all parallelograms rectangles? No. Are all parallelograms rhombuses? No. But are rhombuses parallelograms? Yes, they have the characteristics of a parallelogram. Are rectangles parallelograms? Yes, they have a, the tendencies or the characteristics of a parallelogram. A trapezoid, it can be considered a quadrilateral, but are all quadrilaterals trapezoids? No. So we can go up, but we can't classify going back down. Okay, we don't say everything fits into the category looking down. Okay, then another note that you need to write down is that the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral will be equal to 360 degrees. 
the sum of the interior angles. Now, what are the interior angles? The inside, right in here. These are the interior angles. No matter what the quadrilateral is, all those angles should add up to be 360 degrees. All right, so let's see how this works, how the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral equals 360 degrees. So what I'm going to do, like I did with the triangles, I am going to tear off each vertex. Okay, and then I'm going to put them together. And what do you notice they make? A circle. A circle, it is how many degrees? 360 degrees. So no matter what the quadrilateral, all the angles, the interior angles, add up to be 360 degrees. There's also another way to remember this. No matter what the quadrilateral is, if you will take one vertex and draw all the diagonals from that one vertex that I can draw, well, it looks like I can make one diagonal, correct? How many triangles do I have there? And what is the sum of the interior angles of every triangle? That's 180. This is 180. What's 180 plus 180? 360. And that goes with any polygon. That's true for any polygon. So let's do a, a five-sided figure. How do I know what the sum of the interior angles here is? Well, let's just take any vertex and let's draw all the diagonals. How many can I draw? Two, it looks like. One, two. Okay, so how many triangles did it make? 180, 180, 180. What's 180 times three? Zero, 540. So the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon, that means all these angles here, will add up to be 540 degrees. And that's the shortcut for finding it, no matter what your polygon is. Are there any questions on that? Okay, that concludes our lessons on quadrilaterals is what we focused on today.